Okay, hi Mike. Thank you very much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. It's, it's your first time on Geek Thvana, of course. It is. Yeah, that's right. No, thank you very much for the invite, Sean. I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to this and uh, yeah, getting some clear information out to the public. I think it'll be good for everybody. Exactly. And I, I think that, that really is what we're focusing on here in terms of trying to clear up some of the issues which have come up from the previous videos, but also other other questions that have come up from the community. So we'll, we'll dive straight in, as it were. Um, the, the first one, what powers do the police have to identify the drone pilot and do they require suspicion to do so? We can, I suppose we can start there. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so it's worth saying that all these powers um, are available uh, for everybody to look at on legislation.gov.uk. Uh, the relevant bit here being Schedule 9 of the uh, ATMUA Act. Uh, th that's the, the place where it lays out uh, the, the powers that police have got to require certain information from op operators or pilots. So the, the relevant bit here uh, we're talking about is the, um, is the power for a police officer to um, require information from the remote pilot about the operator. Uh, which is Schedule 9, uh, Paragraph 2. Um, and in effect, it uh, requires them to identify uh, an operator if they believe that a flight is taking place and the, the pilot or the person was the pilot uh, at the time. So the reasonable grounds for suspecting that a, a, a registration requirements did apply, uh, and then they can require information from the person uh, to identify who the person is who uh, owns or operates the, the drone. Um, or the person who made the drone available to them for use. Um, okay. So again, I don't know if it's worth flashing up there, Sean, the, the actual wording we'll of the do. legislation, but that's usually pretty helpful. No problem at all. Okay, so if, if if the drone only requires an operator ID, which of course at the moment in the UK sub-250 um, drones uh, do, and, the, and the, therefore the pilot doesn't need a flyer ID, can the officer still compel the pilot to reveal their identity? So under that specific power, no, um, the, the mechanism would be that you would require the person to identify who the operator was, and then you'd engage with the operator and again, see if the powers under schedule nine applied to get them to provide the information they hold uh, about the pilots. Now, it is worth saying a couple of things here. Firstly, um, there is a power in schedule nine for uh, the officer to require the drone to be handed over for inspection, um, in which case, obviously, they're going to be able to see whether it's got an operator ID sticker on it or not. Um, and it's also worth noting that the, the powers under ATMUA are not the only powers available to police. And actually, the, there are a variety of others that, you know, it's, it's not mutually exclusive. So if they don't have a power under ATMUA, that doesn't mean there isn't another power existing somewhere else that would require that person to provide their uh, personal details. And I guess here we're really talking about name, date of birth uh, and address, I guess, are the main ones that people consider when we're talking about this kind of thing. Okay. So um, it, it, the, 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 there, there are powers in terms of um, if, if the drone is, let's say, above 250 grams and there is a operator ID and a flyer ID, so therefore the competency that's required is to have at least a flyer ID to fly that drone, then, of course, the officer does have the powers under, under the same legislation to uh, confirm the, the flyer's details, basically, their personal details. Yeah, that's, that's right. And again, it's, it's worth noting that the, the wording of the legislation does provide that it's the information that the constable considers reasonable so it's really for the officer to say what they reasonably consider to be required and in reality that is going to be the flyer id but also a means by which they can verify whether that's a genuine flyer id or operator id and in reality that probably is going to mean the name date of birth and the address but uh, again if you look at this specific wording it's about what the constable considers reasonable rather than uh, the other person Okay, so that, that, that sort of comes into the remit of uh, depending on what's happening, depending on how serious it is, that type of thing. And um, if, if, he's, if a police officer is just coming along and checking something, then they might not ask anything more than that. If they suspect of a crime, then of course you'll, you'll probably know that by that stage. Um, and so, so yeah, okay, that, 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 that makes complete sense. What, what grounds are there to cross-correlate the information? So let's say if I am flying a sub-250 gram drone and there's only an operator ID, um, I've told you that the operator ID is in someone else's name. So it's someone else's drone. It could be a company, for instance. Um, what powers are there for you to check that and cross correlate? Do I have to prove that I'm not the operator? Um, so in, in effect, no. The, the, let's say if you, if you look at the powers that exist under ATMA to require the information from the pilot, there's then a, a whole framework of uh, legislation that applies to what police do with that information. Um, a lot of it is covered by Data Protection Act, but if you look at a lot of other policing spheres 
where you receive information that you then want to check against, whether it's other state databases or other organizations, there is a clear precedent that police can do that in order to deliver their functions of protecting public safety, preventing and detecting crime, uh, that kind of thing. Um, I think it's worth saying, though, since you mentioned it, the point about grounds, um, another thing that we are aware people don't fully um, have their heads around at the moment is that a lot of these powers under ATMOA don't require any suspicion of any offence. So when you look at um, a lot of the powers to require information, it starts off having to believe that a flight is taking place or has taken place um, and that the person is you know, the, the pilot or the operator, depending on what the case may be. So none of those things require any suspicion of an offence. Um, that suspicion of an offence, a reasonable suspicion of an offence, only applies uh, really in two cases. The first one being the uh, power to require a pilot to ground the drone, uh, and the second one being the power to seize and retain um, drones or associated articles, whether that's uh, controllers or mobile phones or memory cards or whatever else it might be. But the other one's about requiring information. The very fact that a person is flying a drone or has flown a drone and they are the pilot or the operator, that is enough for police to be able to to issue that requirement. OK, but the, but for, 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 for any of this to, to kick off, as it were, they, they need to suspect that a, a flight has happened. So um, does that mean if you come around the corner and I'm holding a drone, but you haven't seen a drone flying? I mean, wh where, where is the line as far as you're concerned? Um, yeah, again, it, it's, it's worth it's worth looking at the, the actual wording of the act, um, but it, it talks about reasonable grounds to believe. Um, so it's okay. reasonable grounds to believe that um, a flight uh, is taking place or has taken place. And that the person, as I say, was the, the pilot or the um, or the operator. Now, it could be that this is something the officer's seen. It could be something that they've been told about. It could be CCTV. It could be a variety of things. Um, but ultimately, it's going to be for the officer to be able to evidence later on uh, that they had reasonable grounds for believing. I think in many cases, what you're talking about, it might be that the officer's seen it, or it might be that it's been reported to them. That would, you know, that that could very easily provide them with reasonable grounds to believe that the flight has taken place and the person was the, the pilot or the operator.